Matt Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. Heavenly Father, I humbly beseech you to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I have a confession to make. I've been watching a lot of TV. Uh, I don't think you have an accurate sense of how much TV I've been watching. Uh, during the pandemic, uh, watched a lot. Now, as I thought about that, it's probably more about being an empty nester. And for the first time, having control over the TV. (laughs) But I must admit, I'm about this close to getting TV trays and a lazy boy so I can keep up with my stories, as I like to call them. And we've watched uh, a lot of sci-fi. I've watched some westerns and horror, which I like. But of late, we've really gotten into British mysteries. I don't know if you have any, if I've got any British mystery fans out there, but uh, we're always looking, Joanne and I, for some good recommendations. Um, what stands out to me in particular, and this, this really came to me as I watched one of these particular ones called Vera. That's the, that's the name of, of this. And it's a mystery. She's a police officer, has a partner, uh, and... Uh, and the two of them are like oil and water. You know? they, don't really, they don't really go together. And uh, what I noticed is that uh, there is a particular kind of quality of risk going on in the show. Uh, it's true that it is uh, about solving the mystery. Right? Like that's kind of the vessel in which uh, Vera takes place, like others. Um, but in the middle, kind of in deeper in, is this relationship that Vera has with her police partner in risking relationship. And Vera is, is very kind of shut down and closed down, and you can't kind of get in to know who she is, uh, and she risks uh, re- relationship. And as she does so, her own narrative about her relationships with her father and her relationships with others begins to to come out and sometimes what happens are good things well i would say most of the time it's good but that doesn't mean that it's not painful and uncomfortable for our dear vera and sometimes she gets angry and she she reacts badly to the revelation that she gets about the true nature of her life and her story uh, and uh, the relationship of those around her. There's a pattern, trust. As she builds trust with her friend, her partner, she risks a little bit of her relationship and then it's revealed to her a little more about herself and about those around her. Now maybe you're not a British mystery fan, so let's look at Lost in Space. Now, some of you will remember the old Lost in Space, right? Yeah, you see right over there, giggling over there, yeah. Now, Lost in Space, I grew up in Houston, so Lost in Space was only available when I visited my grandmother's house. So I could watch the Rat Patrol and Lost in Space at the same time uh, up in Dallas, the Big D. But there's a new Lost in Space, right? So I don't know how many of you have seen this new Lost in Space, which is the same thing. Family lost in space. They adopt a robot. (laughs) Dr. Smith is there. Evil Dr. Smith. Okay. But, like Vera, it's the same thing. As they risk the relationship with the robot, who at first they think is their enemy, 
as they risk relationship with Dr. Smith, who is despicable, they have revelation about themselves and good things happen. Like, so they trust that maybe they like, will take these tentative steps of trust with the robot or with Dr. Smith. And sometimes it's uncomfortable, but in the end, as they risk, there is revelation that happens and good things happen. Now you're like, what, Andy, does this have to do with our gospel? I think it has everything to do with the gospel. People, it says right at the beginning, people had great, what, expectation. They had great expectation. They're looking for something. They're looking for something. And what happens is John appears, right? Following me? John appears. Now, you, cannot, you can trust John, what John's telling you or not. Mm -hmm. Following me? Because he's a crazy man in the wilderness. You probably shouldn't trust somebody in camel's hair eating locusts, right? <laughs> So you can trust that. But what we know about the rest of the story, not just in today's gospel, but if we trust, what we know is the Holy Spirit is active. And if we will risk acting on this trust, there is revelation. So if we trust what John the Baptist is saying, and we go looking for the Christ at the waters, right? what we find is Jesus and the Holy Spirit. You see what I'm saying? It's like trust, risk, revelation. I, I don't think it's that hard. Except it is. Right? Yeah, now I'm going to get into your business. Because that's the thing. Now you and I have been through, we have been through some stuff, haven't we? We have been through pandemic. And it's evidently not over. And that's been hard. It doesn't matter what you think about it. It's been hard. Some people lost people. It's been hard. Some people have different opinions about it. It's been hard. And in the middle of that, we've had politics. That's been hard. Never before really has politics invaded our church communities in the way that it has just recently, right? It's been hard. We've been through a really hard time. But what I've learned is that at this point... We have decided, some of us, that church and religion may actually be worthwhile. Amen. Right? It actually may be worthwhile to live in a community. Amen. It may be worthwhile to come together for worship. Because we missed it, didn't we? I mean, we can do it online and thank God we're doing it online because that allows us to evangelize people who, who find us. So, so don't get rid of the online, but what we learned is it's good to be together, Amen. Amen. right? And we also have decided to invest ourselves in being together. That's why you're here today. And those who can't be with us but are watching, they will come back, won't they? Amen. When they get, when the anxiety goes down and they feel safe, they'll come back because they miss it too. We've decided to invest in church and in religion. I want you, and I'll just be honest, that's all good. I want you to invest in Jesus today. I want you to invest in trusting the revelation of John the Baptist, that Jesus is Christ, is Lord of our lives, the Lord of lords, the Prince of Peace. Would you trust that? I'd like you to trust that. And trust that, in trusting that, it matters. It actually matters to your life, not just that you come here on Sundays, but that you trust God is the Lord of Lords and Christ is revealed to us through the power of the Holy Spirit as the Christ. To redeem us, to save us, to give us grace. I want you this coming week to trust that every day. Not just today. Just, let's just try seven days. Can you give me? You don't even have to do it seven. You just have to do it six. Because I'll count you today. So can you do that six days for me? 
I'm only asking for six right now. <laughs> Trust. Then I want you to do one thing. I've learned this is sometimes all we can handle. I, I mean, I don't know about you, but life could be busy. So I'm just going to ask for one thing this week. You trust, and the one thing I'm going to ask you to do is act on that trust. Invest in risking baptismal action. Risk it. Now you'll say, well, what is that? Well, we're going to talk about that in the baptismal covenant, so I'm not going to like go through all that right now. What I'm going to say is risk doing something that you would not normally do that puts a little good out in the world. You trust that God is leading you this week to do at least, at least one good thing that doesn't have to do with church. <laughs> that just got hard, didn't it? Some of you are like, oh yeah, I'm going to be here next week. I'll just do this. No, I'm not talking about prayer. I want you to do one good. People went out to see John the Baptist and to see the Christ. They went, they acted, they did something. They trusted the revelation, and it was given to them when they risked it. Now, is it going to be comfortable? Well, sometimes it is. Sometimes it isn't. Sometimes it's hard. And sometimes it takes you to places that are very difficult and uncomfortable. Well, welcome to the story of the Bible. You find me somebody who had it easy in there. They all have it hard. It never goes the way. I had a monk once tell me that God never reveals how it's really going to go. And that's true. You think Moses knew what he was getting into? No. You think the disciples knew? No. They didn't know. And you're not going to know either. There is no safety in following Jesus. You're going to trust Jesus, the Lord of Lords, and that you are redeemed and saved, and you're going to act one thing. But here's what I'll tell you. In that one thing, in that one thing, you're going to love, you're going to, you're going to, it'll be revealed to you God's love for you. You're not only going to put love and action and goodness out in the world, you're going to discover God's love for you, and you're going to find out about what it means to be Christ in the world around you, and what it means to love sometimes people that are hard to love. Trust. Risk the action, and it will be revealed to you who you are, the beloved of God, made in the image of Christ, sent into the world to act on God's behalf. One thing. Why? Because it matters. Because it matters. It mattered last week and the week before. But now's the time for us to get serious about what we say we believe in. The book of Hebrews says, God is fond of words and clean lips. God also loves it when we share what we have and when we do good works. Those, the book of Hebrews says, are sacrifices that are pleasing to God. So trust and risk. And I promise you, revelation's going to happen. And after you do one, try a second one. After you do six days, try another week. See how it goes. Because I believe that just as Jesus is transformed in front of all those people, and John the Baptist saw the truth, you will be transformed. And in fact, this church will be transformed as it shares the good news that it is putting out into the world. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Turn with me to the bottom of page two. Page two. And I'm going to ask the candidates for confirmation and reception. Would you all come up and uh, 
come up here just as we practiced. All right, candidates will now be presented. I present, do you want me to do them one at a time? You, yeah, sure. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I present Kyle Thomas for confirmation. I present Richard Griffin for reception. I present Zayden Jasso for confirmation. I present Dominic Di Tommaso and Giuseppe Di Tommaso for confirmation. Wonderful. I have two questions for you. The first is there at the bottom of page two. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil? The second one is for you as well. The answer on page three. Do you renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? Wonderful. Now, would the whole congregation please stand as you are able? This next question is for you. And as you stand, this is a visible sign of our support. Will you, you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? We will. we will. Then let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship and the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent? and return to the Lord. I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. And will you seek and serve Christ and all persons, loving yourself, your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. And will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. And let us now pray for these persons who have renewed their commitment to Christ. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the truth, in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, we thank you that by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you've overcome sin and brought us to yourself. That by the sealing of the Holy Spirit, you have bound us to your service. Renew in these your servants the covenant you made with them at their baptism. Send them forth in the power of that Spirit to perform the service you set before them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 Richard for reception. Here, give me, yeah, there you go.
Richard, we recognize you as a member of Christ's one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and we receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. Amen. Amen. Kyle, oh, wow, or confirmation, yeah. yeah. Defend, O Lord, your servant Kyle, with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, how about we do the two brothers? Okay. Yeah. Well, all three of you come up. You all three come up here. And then, uh, as a sign of support for you all, uh, the youth group really wanted to participate. So, you all put your masks on and come on up here, youth group people. Yeah, we'll have a very generous definition of youth group people. So youth group, that, yeah. What? Well, I mean, yeah, like, if, that, you know, if, that, if you feel like that, youth that's, group yes, people. Yes. yes. Let the Holy Spirit tell yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, there good. Go. Now what you do is you just, now you all just can put, when it comes time for each one, you will just put your hands on their shoulders, okay? And uh, I'll, put, I'll put my hands on their head. <laughs> all right. Are we ready? Oh, almost. Almost. The youngest people in the congregation are coming forward now. All righty. All right. Giuseppe. Giuseppe. For confirmation. All right, Seth. Hey, you're going to come and look closer. Everybody come right in here. We're, we're going to do it quick. Yeah, yeah, perfect. This is how it works. Defend, O Lord, your servant Giuseppe with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more. Till he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. 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 Now we have Dominic. Dominic. Defend, O oh Lord, your servant Dominic with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. 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 And Zayd. Zayd. You gotta scoot over a little. Can you scoot over? Okay, good. There we go. Defend, O Lord, your servant Zayden with your heavenly grace. He may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. 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 Okay, you all can all go back to your seats now. Now, uh, the service of confirmation concludes with a blessing. And the blessing is for, certainly for those who we just confirmed. So it's a, it's a blessing to them. They've committed their lives to Christ. It's a blessing for them. But we all reaffirmed our baptismal covenant. And we all did that. So it really is a, it is a blessing for everybody. So I invite you to do what we do in the Episcopal Church, which is to bow your head to receive this blessing. Almighty and everlasting God, let your fatherly hand ever be over these, your servants. Let your Holy Spirit ever be with them and so lead them in the knowledge and obedience of your word that they may serve you in this life and dwell with you in the life to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Peace, everybody. Peace.
When asked across the way, what is the favorite, what brings me the most joy, this, I have to tell you, worshiping with you brings me the most joy. It's good to be with you today to worship as family. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Andy Doyle. I'm the bishop of the Diocese of Texas. Uh, this area, this region, is overseen by Bishop Ryan. So you're going to see Bishop Ryan more than you see me. But I have to go, and that's because I have to go to all the churches. So it takes me many years to get to each congregation. I'm in a different congregation uh, uh, every, every Sunday. I was in Hope, Houston on Christmas Eve here. Uh, I think I'll be out, out west in Lago Vista or something next week. I don't know. We'll deal with that when it comes, right? So it, but it's good to be with you. I want to say how grateful I am. I have just, a, just filled with gratitude that you all have continued to participate in church, shown up, you've given, uh, you believe in St. Richard's, and that makes me happy, because I believe in St. Richard's too. Amen. And it is a good thing uh, that you all are here, and I am so grateful for the many gifts that you uh, uh, give to make St. Richard's possible. We are not out of the woods yet, but we will be. Uh, and uh, people of Texas have dealt with these things before, and we're dealing with this one, and we'll get on the other side. Okay. So uh, we're here, and that is miraculous. Uh, and thank God for that. In the middle of that, you called a rector. <laughs> one, of the, one of the many it's going to turn out to be that gets called in the midst of this thing. What a good job he's done. And coming in in the middle of this pandemic... The, and it was, you know, it was really weird when he arrived. And, and he just, he and Carly have just given themselves to you all. What a gift, huh? I'm so grateful. And he is a gift to the diocese. I can't wait for him to settle in here a little bit and then get him to help lead the diocese with me. Uh, I'm very excited about that. So you all did a fantastic job in calling him, and it just makes my heart glad to see how he's engaged with you all and is leading you, and uh, I just want you to know, I see it, I see what you give, and I see what he's giving us, and, and I'm, I'm pleased and happy, but most of all, I'm just thankful, very thankful. I'm very humbled by that, truly. Um, it's been a joy to be with you. One of the things that this congregation does very, very well is eat and celebrate. And so that's really my only announcement uh, today is that we're grateful that Bishop Doyle is with us. I'm so excited for all of the folks who've been confirmed and received uh, for the work that God is doing in their lives, for um, bringing them to us. I mean, I, what I love about this confirmation slash reception class is that we've got youth who have been here for forever and we've got some adults who have joined us during this difficult season and who found their spiritual home here. And I'm so grateful uh, for both of them and the way, the, the witness that they are uh, to all of us and the hope that they are to all of us. So I'm excited for that. There is a reception right after this service in the parish hall. Uh, we all need to say prayers of thanksgiving and uh, gratitude to Kathy Stites and the kitchen team for what is uh, we, we can all assume it's going to be some delicious, delicious food. So I invite you all to join us over there uh, right after this service. Um, it is a new year, uh, a new calendar year, and so also pay attention to your emails, to the website, to our social media pages as we talk about uh, some upcoming program offerings and things like that as we deepen our discipleship in the year ahead. Uh, but for now, we feast, okay? For now, we party. So that's what we're going to do right after the service. Uh, and again, I'm grateful for all of you who are joining us here in this space, but also those, as always, who are joining us online. I know that we have a number of parishioners who are uh, dealing with COVID exposures or have COVID themselves. And so please keep those folks uh, in your prayers uh, this week and the week ahead as we do continue to move forward through all of this together. So walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give thanks, thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in Jesus Christ our Lord you have received us as your sons and daughters, made us citizens of your kingdom, and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Amen. Our Father. Amen. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter at Texas Bishop 
and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.